Hello everyone, welcome to my Green Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, psychotherapy, neuropsychology, neuroscience and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who has been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. Here in Mind Brain Talks, I discuss and describe different topics from psychology to neuroscience and I try to explain them the best as I can for you to understand a little bit more about it. All contents here are just for educational purposes and it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So, today let's talk about neurocognitive syndrome. This syndrome was identified based on the complex neural perspective. But before we get further on this, first let's see the manuals that I recommend to you today. The first is the principles of neuropsychology, the second is the fundamentals of human neuropsychology, the third is the neuropsychology handbook, the fourth is the handbook of clinical neuropsychology. The fifth is the neuropsychological assessment and the sixth is the clinical neuropsychology. So, now let's see the neurocognitive psychopathological syndrome. So, first let's see the definition of neuropsychological syndrome. Neuropsychological syndromes are all the neurocognitive impairments that result from brain dysfunction, congenital or acquired, with profound impacts in mental health and daily life. Typically, these syndromes have severe impacts on memory, language and other neurocognitive processes. So, now let's look specifically to the neurocognitive syndrome. Neurocognitive syndrome is a set of neurocognitive symptoms that include symptoms in the executive functions, attention, memory and self-perception that are manifested psychologically and can be considered to a certain extent to the dysfunction of four major neuronal networks. So these neural networks are the following Frontoparietal Executive Network Salience Network Amygdaloid Hippocampal Memory Network and Default Mode Network So, when we look to the Frontoparietal Executive Network we see symptoms such as apathy, loss of focus, loss of planning and difficulties in the abstract abilities Also, we see difficulties in visual expression and problem solving and difficulties in mental imagery. In the salience network, we see difficulties in perform and task monitoring, salience confusion, difficulties in insight and emotion-based complex decisions. In the amygdaloid hippocampal memory network, we see hyperactivation of amygdala responses with extreme fear and stress. Also, we see memory perseveration and stagnation and stereotyped memory. So, problems in the default mode network result in difficulties in self-awareness, self-reflection, self-referencing and self-other discrimination. Also, social and emotional disinhibition and impaired social cognition. So, the neurocognitive syndrome must have several symptoms that typically are related with these neural networks. So, we have a, a model here that helps us to understand how the neurocognitive syndrome may be working in the brain. So, we have the top-down inputs, which also have the sensory and the limbic and the self-referential cognition. They all tend to be processed initially in the salience network. However, problems in weak salience mapping result in problems in impoverished cognition in the dorsal prefrontal cortex and deficits in self-referential mental activity, which typically is associated with the default mode network, impairments in the precuneus and impairments in the ventromedial prefrontal cortex and in the posterior cortex. So, as you are seeing here, this model helps us to understand how the neurocognitive syndrome may be developed in the brain. So, the neurocognitive syndrome seems to reflect the association of several psychological symptoms that are typically associated with different complex neural networks the default mode network, the frontoparietal network, the salience network and the amygdaloid hippocampal network So, now let's look to the summary and the key points 
we saw that the neurocognitive syndrome has several symptoms associated with several neural networks and these neural networks are extremely important in the cognitive and mental processing. These neural networks are the frontoparietal executive network, the salience network, amygdaloid hippocampal memory network and the default mode network. All these networks are extremely important in the mental processing and when there are impairments in these networks, these symptoms tend to be clustered together and tend to manifest in the flow of consciousness resulting in daily life impairments and difficulties in psychological well-being. So, this is just an introductory video to the Neurocognitive Syndrome and in the future we will take a more in-depth look in the Neurocognitive Syndrome, okay? So, stay tuned! Well, it's all for today. Don't forget to see the video description regarding today's theme if you want to see the manuals and the books that I recommend to you. Also, if you like what I'm doing, please consider to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. You can use the comment section below to express your mind and to express your thoughts. Let me know what you think about all the things that you saw here. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!